Hey everybody, it's Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. Today I'm going to be showing you some sketching tips inside of Fusion 360. And the part that I'm going to be using is something that John Saunders has been working on on his NYC CNC uh, YouTube channel. And it was last week's Wednesday widget. I thought that I could maybe show some ways that that part could be drawn a little simpler. So one of the things I'm going to start out with talking about is in Fusion, along with other Autodesk products, if you right click, you're going to get a lot of options that are kind of a shortcut to get you what you want to do. So I could go up to my traditional panels up here and grab a command like sketch a line or sketch a, a circle, a center diameter circle. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to right click and hover over the sketch and it's going to expand out some options for me and there's that center point diameter circle. So that allows me to stay in canvas instead of having to go up to the menus all the time to get the commands that I need. So I'll fire up that command and I'll choose the plane that I want to put that on. And I'm just going to make this first circle coincident to the origin. And the diameter for my first circle is going to be 4.5. I'm going to make another circle that's coincident, um, concentric I should say, to that one. So I'll just right click and I'm going to say repeat center diameter circle. Drag another one up. And this diameter I want 3.375. We'll enter that in there, and then I'm going to draw a third circle kind of over here in space. Again, I'm just going to right click and choose repeat center diameter circle. Uh, click, I'm going to say two inches for diameter this time. Then I'm going to use my constraints. I want the center point of this circle to line up with the center point of that circle horizontally. So I'll use my horizontal vertical constraint to line those two points up. And we'll add a dimension between those two to control the distance between them. And that dimension is going to be 5. Okay, in John's video, uh, what he does is he starts the line command. And he draws a couple of lines out in space. Like this. And then he uses the, the tangent constraint to add a tangent relationship between that line and that circle. And that line and that circle and that circle and that line and the line and the circle. And then what he does is he comes back and uses the trim command to get rid of those parts of the line that he doesn't need. So here's one of the places where I think I can show you how to do this uh, a little easier. So we'll go back and we'll edit this sketch. Okay, so I'm just going to delete these lines off. And now what I'll do in this case is I'm going to start the line command. Actually, I'm just going to right click, go over my sketch, find my line. And I'm just going to click anywhere on the first circle. I just want to make sure I see that coincidence symbol up here. So I'll go ahead and click. And when I move my mouse, the line isn't necessarily doing what I want it to. But to make it behave the way I want it to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift button. And when I do, that line is going to stay tangent to that circle wherever I move my mouse. So now all I need to do is hover, go over to the second circle around the perimeter of the circle and look until I find that second tangent symbol up here. And when I click, that line is now connected on both ends. So I'll do the same thing on the bottom. I'll repeat line command, click somewhere on the circle, hold the shift button down, now we're tangent, look for my second tangent symbol, and there we are. So now that completes our shape. We could come back if we want to, and uh, we could trim those two needed parts that we don't need. Uh, another thing that happens on John's part is he draws a little boss over on the side. And there's going to be a bolt that goes through there to, to do the clamping pressure. This clamp is going to be split as well. So uh, in his video, he centers it with a, a dimension and a formula. And that's acceptable, but there may be an easier way to do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the line command. And I'm not going to be too careful about what I draw here. I'm just going to draw a rough shape, making sure that I'm coincident on both ends. Okay. So now I'm going to use a command called the Project Geometry command. I put it on my toolbar. You may not have it on your toolbar. If you don't have a command on your toolbar, you just have to find the command that you want. Come down, wait till you see that little Add to Toolbar button. When you click that, it will then be added onto your, uh, onto your uh, toolbar up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Project Geometry button to project in my X axis into this part. So now we have kind of a pink reference line here. And to center this up, I'll use the symmetry constraint. And I'll click on the bottom line, the top line, 
and the middle line. But before I do that, uh, notice as I move uh, the top or the bottom line, they don't move in relationship to each other or the center line of the part. That's what we're going to fix. So I'll start the symmetry command. We'll click on the bottom line, the top line, and that's symmetric reference. Try that again. Symmetry. There we go. That time it added it. So now as I move my lines, you can see that they stay, they're in relationship to each other, and this boss is centered on the part. And then what we can do is we can do that one more time uh, with a couple lines. Um, I could have drawn this all at first, but we'll just draw this line connected over to there. Draw one more line connected over to there. Now we can come back and use our symmetry constraint between that line, that line, and our reference line again. And now we have more symmetry. We can add a dimension on here and control it how we want to. I'll call it point 0.1. And then now we can use our trim command and just start snipping away the parts of the line that we don't want anymore. So we don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want that, that segment, or that segment. So that should give us the closed shape that we need. So that's one way you can go about drawing this part. I'll show you one more way you can do it. You can also use the line command to draw arcs. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to use sketch and I'm going to say line and we'll put it back on that same plane again. And this time I'm just going to kind of roughly draw out the shape that I want. So I'll click on the line and I'll, I'll draw that angled line first. Now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to hold the mouse button down and I'm going to swing my mouse and it's going to go into the arc command. So now we'll just roughly stop it right about there. And again, I'll just drag my mouse down. Now we're back into the line command. Now I'll press and hold again and now we're back into the arc. And there's a rough shape. Um, we can start to massage this around by pulling that to the origin point. And you notice that we only have two tangent constraints, so we're going to have to go back and add a couple tangent constraints onto this part. So I'll say tangent between there and there, and tangent between there and there. Now there's the rough shape of our part. Uh, the other thing we might want to do is put a horizontal constraint between those two points. And now we can start dimensioning this part. If you look, these are now radius uh, arcs instead of diameter arcs. So when I add my dimension, I can still do it. When I say dimension and I click on my first arc, what I need to do now is I need to right click and choose diameter and then I can come and tell it that I want that diameter to be 4.5. Same thing with the second one, I'll come over and place it, but before I click it, I'll right click, choose diameter, and again I can come and I can say I want that to be 2. And then we'll add our final dimension between these two center points and that dimension is going to be 5. So there's a different way that you could use to draw that same shape. Um, using one single line command and then maybe having to add some tangent constraints around there. Thanks for watching.